Don't worry, it's more than enough. Food for the soul. Day turns into night, sets the evening sun. Hunger looms large, everyone. Wait in stillness, prayerful heart. Long true food the Lord imparts. Stretch palm lifted, full to brim, enough for all, and day draws dim. Not fish, not loaf, nor food of any kind. Food for the heart and food for the mind. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship with First United Methodist Church. May the Spirit fill you as we worship together today. Who's spiritually hungry? We are, we are. Who's ready to follow Jesus to be fed? We are, we are. Who is willing to wait? Who is willing to share? Who is willing to persevere in drought times, food scarcity times? We are, we are. Let, Let us follow, follow the, the one who, who sits in, in the boat. boat. Let us Let go, go to the lake shore and wait for instruction. instruction. Jesus, Jesus, we are, we are here. here. Fill, Fill us, us with, with your, your word, word this day. day. Word. word. Come to the lake shore, looking neither for wealthy nor wise ones. You only asked me to follow humbly. Oh Lord, with your eyes you have searched me, and while smiling have spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. You know so well my possessions. My boat carries no gold and no weapons you will find there my nets and labor oh lord with your eyes you have searched me and while smiling have spoken my name now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me, by your side, I will seek other seas. Let us pray. In the darkness of night or the brightness of day, you, O oh Lord, are present to us. We will follow you anywhere as we wrestle with the hungers of life which seem to drain us of our energy. We struggle to find out who you call us to be. But you, O oh Lord, reach out to us with spiritual and physical food. You reassure us of your presence and empowerment for the days ahead. Calm our spirits and prepare our hearts and lives to receive your awesome grace. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Reading from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31, from the New Revised Standard Version. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. 
He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If I die young, bury me in satin, lay me down on a bed of roses, sink me in the river at dawn, send me away with the words of a love song. If I die young, bury me in satin, lay me down on a bed of roses, sink me in the river at dawn, send me away. Song. If oh, I die, sometimes it causes me lay me to down tremble. on a bed of roses, Would sink me in the river at dawn, send me my way Lord. with the words of a love song. If Would I die, one bread, one body, lay me down on one a bed of roses, Lord. sink me in the river one at dawn, of glass, sing my way bless. If I die, one bread, and one body, body if I lay me down, down on one a Lord, bed of roses, Lord, sink me in the river, one cup of blessing, send me bread, words of a love song. If oh, I die, and sometimes he the man he lay me down on a bed of roses, sink me in the river, we are one body, send this way. One bread, one body, find my Lord, one Lord of all. Were you there? One cup of blessing which we bless. Oh, and sometimes we, though many, we tremble throughout the tremble, earth. Tremble. We are one body in this one Lord. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21, from the New Revised Standard Version. This takes place right after the disciples told Jesus about the death and burial of John the Baptist. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the town. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. 
You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I ask you, do we leave today's message undisturbed and let the simplicity of our faith rest in the fact that this was a miraculous fish and bread story? This is the only miracle found in all four Gospels, and what a story. Jesus producing seemingly out of nowhere for thousands of people food, a treasured story with a message. It shows Christians everywhere at the very heart of the gospel is the message of hope. Hope that we will never go hungry, spiritually hungry, that is, as long as we continue to seek out our faith and relationship through and with Jesus Christ. I have another story I'd like to share about feeding many. My deck in the summer months becomes my altar for prayer. It is the place I go to get away from the world, to listen and have conversation with my God. I think very similar to Jesus going away by himself to pray, as he did in today's story. One day, I was at my altar, and I began to hear noises that I could not recognize. They began quietly, and soon the noise seemed to multiply. I spent a great deal of time trying to seek out its origin. I spent what seemed like hours trying to track who or what was disturbing my peace and making such racket. After moving my eyes from branch to branch, I finally found the culprit. It was a baby owl. Excitedly, I ran in and called my children. I even went to the neighbor's house. Come and see, come and see. And as we stood below that baby owl, we soon realized there wasn't just one baby. That one baby soon bega became two, and then three, and then four, and then five. And suddenly, a mama comes swooping in to feed those screeching babies. Over and over again, she flew away and came back with food until their hunger ceased. And as suddenly as she had come, she disappeared, and the babies were left to their own. After a day of fending for themselves, they too flew off, ready to feed themselves out in the big world. Just as Jesus did after the 5,000 feeding took place, again he went to find a place of solitude. This fish and loaves story makes me think of the times where people stop in right at dinner time. You ever had that happen? First you panic, and you wonder if you have enough to feed everyone, and then you question yourself as to whether you should wait to eat until they're gone or invite them and lessen the portions by filling each plate yourself. I've gone so far as to feign that I wasn't hungry, so there would be enough to go around. Ever happened to you? We search the cupboards frantically for anything to serve while the family entertains the guests out in the living room, hoping beyond hope that we'll find all four food groups. Let's see, cheese doodles, cheese, yes, good, dairy, ketchup for fruit, I know it's a fruit, they say tomatoes are a fruit, a half-eaten beef jerky for entree. I'll just cut the portion small. Perhaps mint toothpaste for dessert. It might work. Not. If Jesus had been with us during those times, he would have simply looked at us and said, I tell you, do not worry about your life. 
what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body, more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Don't send them away. You feed them. Why must we be like the disciples? Why can't we simply trust like the baby owls that their mom would come and feed them? More importantly, why can't we put our trust in God that God will provide and God will feed us as well? This is a story of mystery, but also one that invites us to be cognizant of the gifts of prayer, patience, and perseverance. All three of these traits noticed in today's story of Jesus. First, as he goes off by himself to what? Pray. He then showed extreme patience to his disciples and the throngs of people when all he really wanted to do was be by himself. And finally, his perseverance of always witnessing to his power and position in the world. This came through loud and clear as he miraculously turned five fish and two loaves of bread into enough food to feed the entire 5,000 people. I know what it's like to want to pray, and I'm sure each of you do as well. I know what it's like to want to be by myself with my thoughts. In fact, ask any mother or grandmother where they go when they need peace and quiet. You got it, the bathroom, that's right, but it doesn't work. At my house, anyway, you cannot find quiet in the restroom. Kiki, are you in there? Grandma Kiki, I need you. Kiki, are you there? Just like poor Jesus in today's story. We're hungry, we're hungry. It was imperative that Jesus have Sabbath away from people and distractions so that he could be in conversation with the Father after losing his dear cousin John the Baptist to Herod's horrible, hideous act of murder just a few short hours before. In those brief moments, Jesus was visually planting to those 5,000 people the need for prayer with the Father, first by looking up to heaven. He was painting a broad picture of the importance of prayer, allowing the people to see him on his knees, hallowing God's name, honoring God, and giving God first place in his life. This is the first lesson in this story, that disciples, you and I, must pray first. In the movie Shadowlands, which is about the life of C.S. Lewis, there's a point towards the end of the movie when a friend comes to Lewis and says, I know how hard you have been praying, and now God is answering your prayers. To which C.S. replied, that's not why I pray, Harry. I pray because I cannot help myself. I pray because I am helpless without it. I pray because the need flows out of me, waking and sleeping. My prayer does not change God. My prayer changes me. Jesus' pain of loss and grief about his cousin needed to be changed as well so that he could continue his work and the work of his father. How many times have we recognized we felt different, calmer, more assured after we have prayed or someone else have prayed over us? Prayer is the greatest gift of healing we have at our disposal. But prayer time alone was not awarded Jesus that day. The crowds followed him, pressing in, demanding his time and attention, like the mama owl who also patiently put the needs of her young babies above her own. Jesus tucked away his own need for prayer time and became the patient and loving healer and feeder of people. Author Scott Higgins tells a story of watching a spider. Have you ever done that? Watch a spider weave a web. Scott said he marveled at the spider's patience. It was a long, labor-intense process, spinning and spinning every night, all for that single catch of a morning fly. The spider must be patient enough to build his first web. 
then repeat that process every single night so that all his hunger would be satisfied. The spider doesn't ask for help. The spider didn't worry. He just repeatedly over and over web, spun a new web. He trusts that his web is going to fulfill his needs. That spider had patience, which is the lesson number two in this story, that with patience, when we await on God, we can trust that God is going to answer. That day, thousands clamored to get Jesus' attention, hoping to be fed, so intent on receiving his blessing, they were willing to withstand the blistering, scorching, hot sun hour after hour. They stayed long after the sun went down, even when their bellies had to be rumbling with hunger. This showed perseverance at its highest level. They knew, or they trusted, that Jesus had something well worth waiting for. Did you know Winston Churchill took three years to get through the eighth grade? Because he had trouble learning English. Ironically, he went on to be the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and once he was even asked to speak at a graduation ceremony. His speech was only six words. Never give up. Never give up. Jesus' followers that day did not give up either, nor did Jesus give up on them. Jesus never gives up. Even when we have strayed the course or are pestering him, her, for attention, Jesus comes out of hiding and gives us our food in due season. Lesson number three, perseverance. Like Jesus, there are days when we too are forced to leave our sacred spaces of quiet. When we walk through or participate in a crowd of Black Lives Matters protesters or protests of any kind. When we find ourselves in the midst of conflict in our workspaces. When we're willing to stand up for the lost and the forsaken. When we catch and watch the endless violence in the world splattered across our television screens. When we find ourselves in the midst of an argument or when our homes have become dwellings of infighting, addictions, or financial insecurity. With every negative visual comment or experience, our quiet is shattered. And yet, yet, Jesus is there. Jesus is still waiting in prayer for you and I to go and ask for help. Unlike those first disciples, we as modern day disciples don't have to ask where or what we will find or what is going to be served because we trust that we can fill our bellies and quench our thirst with the spiritual food that Christ gives. He made this promise that we will never go hungry. Hang on, he said, I'm coming. Don't send them away. Give them something to eat. Whether the people on the hillside shared what they brought for themselves that day, or an actual miracle was performed. One thing we know for sure, everyone was fed. The question, of course, was it really physical food of bread and fish, or was it spiritual food? Perhaps it was both. Imagine how full we might be if we ate of the spiritual food that keeps us dancing in the reign of God's grace. Spiritual food that demands we sing to the flowers in the gardens. Spiritual food that shows us we can put our own desires aside to feed others. Spiritual food that helps us step out of our comfort zones and do something radical in the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritual food that will be, bring wisdom, showing us the value of a personal relationship with Christ. I often wonder why we wait so long to ask Jesus for the kind of food that makes us whole. Is it because we lack patience, perseverance? Is it because we forgot to pray and ask? Author Connor Howard says, God's abundance is like a mother's table. 
which is characterized not only by just enough, but also by radical hospitality. There is always room for more. We have five loaves, two fishes in the world. If we bless them and break them, they will be enough. Put your toothpaste and cheese doodles away, my friends. Jesus is the chef for today. Give him your prayers, your patience, your perseverance, and you will eat. Woo, woo, as the owl would say. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. We are here for you. Jesus, we are here. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. O Lord, we come to you this day facing a trifold crisis in the world. The crisis of COVID, the crisis of economic troubles, the crisis of racism. It has permeated our lives and we wonder if there will be an end. We are uncomfortable, sad, frustrated, confused, fearful, and anxious. When we don't know what to do, we turn to you, and there you are, painting the very vision of who we should be, a body kneeling in prayer. O oh Lord, we pray to you this day for the gift of prayer, not only for ourselves, but for those whom we love, friends and family, strangers and the like. We pray for Becky as she continues her chemo treatment. We pray that her immune system remains strong so she can finish out her course of treatment. We pray for our shut-ins. We pray for young men and women who are struggling to find their way in the world. We pray for those suffering physical ailments, especially Jennifer. We pray for those who are sad because of loss of loved ones, especially June. 
We pray for the children and their teachers as they struggle to find a way forward for schools to reopen. We pray for all those having to make those hard decisions. We pray for answers to the threefold crisis. We pray for ourselves that we might be patient and persevere as we await those answers from our leaders. We pray that we can persevere through trials and tribulations. We pray you can guide us to seek out your food so that people will know us as the children of God. Lord, give your people your peace that we might shine brightly in a dark world. Give us courage to face the world head on. Let your word be our word, your hope be our hope. And in the words of your Son, Jesus Christ, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And the people say, Amen. I invite you now to join with me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to know more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. I offer you now a silent moment of reflection. Your gifts are what keep our ministry going here in Burlington. You can send your gifts in by going to umcburlington.com and click on the giving banner. And we thank you so much. God's blessings on your generosity. We come to the table not just as individuals, but as a community. By sharing the bread and the cup, Christ makes us one with him and one with each other. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way. Yep. No problem. We come to the table not just as individuals, but as a community. By sharing the loaf and the cup, Christ makes us one with him and one with each other. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole of creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, O Lord, for the hope that this meal gives us. That Jesus will return as triumphant king, that the dead will be raised, and that all people will stand before his judgment. 
we face that day without fear. For you, our judge, are our savior. May our daily lives of service aim for the moment when the Son will present his people to the Father and God, will be shown to be true, holy, and gracious. The night in which Jesus was betrayed, he sat around a table with his beloved, and he took bread, and he said, I break this, and I give it to you as a sign of my love and my devotion. This is my body broken for you. As often as you gather in my name, eat of this bread. Likewise, after the supper ended, Jesus gave the Father thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you gather in my name, drink of this cup in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim our faith as signed and sealed in this sacrament. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord our God, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this cup so that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. The bread in which we eat will be a sharing in your body, and the cup in which we drink will be a sharing in the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Take eat. Drink. And be thankful. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us this day with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. And we pray this through Christ, our Lord, and the people say, Amen. Our life this week begins this afternoon at 1 o'clock with a silent vigil on our neighbor's lawn. The Congregational Church has invited us to stand with them in protest against racism from 1 until 1.30. And then later on, 4 o'clock, we have our Sunday night supper. This week, Monday, we have reopening committee meeting at 7 o'clock um, on 8.3. And on 8.6, which is Thursday, we have our regular journey prayer group at 8.30 in the morning. And I pray that the work that we do in the week ahead will help bring one new sheep into the fold. Christ continues to satisfy the hungry heart. You sat
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the blood of Christ outpoured. Do not one cup, one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell whom all the world cannot contain comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name in truth and charity. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Go now, my friends, with a deepened sense of God's presence with you and within you. May prayer, patience, and perseverance be your living in the week ahead. Be blessed mightily by the one who feeds you. Amen.